in to see Dr. Mejia because she's got a, a mole that she's um, worried about and concerned about. So Dr. Mejia is going to check it out and see what it is. And Carol, you were telling me that this has been kind of rapidly growing for a matter of I mean, uh, weeks? Six months. It started in uh, about mid-January as a little, what I thought was a pimple, but then it started to, you know, it's, because it started inside a sunspot, mm -hmm. I was, you know, started to get worried as it started to grow and as I showered and sure. rubbed the soap over it, it hurt. Okay. What I want to do is take a look at it. We use this device called the dermatoscope. It's a very close-up magnification, Jane, which helps us look at moles and different features, but what this is is what we call a cutaneous horn. A cutaneous horn is just an overgrowth of skin, but sometimes it could be from an underlying skin cancer, or a precancer, or in some cases a wart. Now the treatment of this is to biopsy and to remove it, yes. and what I'm going to do, and I've demonstrated right here, biopsies, at least in skin, are, are not too alarming. Many people, you know, fear them, but I'll show you just kind of how simple a simple biopsy can be. Oh good, you're going to do a biopsy. Right now. Right. And we're going to take it off and we'll send, put it in a little bottle, send it to the lab, and then they'll be able to tell us exactly what it is. Okay. And if it is a skin cancer, then we'll want to make sure that all the roots are taken care of. Uh, but growth that don't, or, or I should say moles or spots that you know, change in size, shape, or color, or something that is new that just pops up, as Carol said, a rapidly growing mole can sometimes be a type of skin cancer called a squamous cells. In squamous cells, there's a certain type called a carotidoacanthoma type that can grow within a matter of two weeks. Wow. So, I'm going to numb you up here. Real quick, what about this mole makes it suspicious looking? Well, this why, is, why what is, one is, you know, because just the way it is, it's kind of hard to see on the, on, under the, the, the um, uh, in the video, but it's just kind of hanging like a little horn there, and that's why it's called a cutaneous horn. Okay. And, uh, that's the only reason is we're going to remove it. Plus, it's bothering her, but you know we just want to make sure that it's not an underlying small skin cancer. Okay, and that's the suspicion, and the fact that it doesn't belong there, and the <laughs> fact that it grew very rapidly within right. a matter of you know weeks. Okay. okay. Do you have a history of skin cancer? Oh no. Oh, but you know, these I, I go out in the sun quite a bit, obviously. Do you wear sunblock? Oh yes, all the time, especially <laughs> on my face. <laughs> But, um, you know, when you find, when you see things like this, and you, you get to be, I'm 54 years old. Oh, you, you start great. to Thank you. You're welcome. Um, you start to worry about every little sure. thing. So sure. you're, we're all checking ourselves these days. And, you know, it's uh, because we, people like Dr. McGee yeah, to educate us. Great, yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I just put a little alcohol on it to paint it. I'm just going to take this very teeny tiny, you know, needle. And, Carol, you're just going to feel a little pinch here. Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three, little pinch. One, two, three. Okay. And I inject very slowly. Sometimes anesthesia hurts because of the speed at which we inject. If we inject very slowly, hopefully she'll have a comfortable experience. And in our practice, we try to make sure that uh, we treat everybody like we would want to be treated ourselves. I don't even really feel you know, anything. Okay. I'm going to put just a little bit more in. I'm going very slowly. And I don't know if you can see on camera how I'm kind of just like slowly pumping this rather than just pushing it in fast. Yeah, I noticed that. Okay. And uh, that's so that it just kind of goes on, goes in little micro droplets. Okay. And it's just the slower you inject anesthesia, the more comfortable it is for patients and it doesn't have to be a painful experience. Is it an immediate effect? Pretty much, yes. Are you feeling anything there? No. Okay. I'll put just a little bit more in just to make sure that you're not feeling anything. I feel just a touch of, yeah. I feel just a tiny pinch there. Mm -hmm. and in some cases it's a little stinging. I just want to make sure it's nice and numb. So what do you feel right now, Carol? Um, uh, just like just a tiny little pinprick. It really okay. wasn't. Like maybe an acupuncture needle going in. Very mild. Yeah. I'm happy about that. <laughs> and this is just a little sample of what we put. Well, this is just a formula. We put the specimen in a little we'll bottle. Just take this little razor blade that you see here. We're just going to take a little scrape of it just so we can send it to the lab, remove the bump. Okay, and all I need to do is just take a little superficial portion of it. You're not feeling anything? Mm -hmm. Karen? No, not okay. 
We just want to make sure we get that off. Okay. Then I'll just put this in the bottle. Okay. And then uh, we'll just lightly cauterize this just a little bit, just to stop the bleeding. In some cases, we just use a little cream. We'll put a little bandage on there, and that's it. That's it. And we we'll send it to the lab, and they'll tell us what. How long until you get the results? It may take about uh, you know, a couple days, three days. We like to tell patients up to about a week, uh, just to give us plenty of time. But by about a week, we should certainly have the results back. In some cases, we can get the result back as soon as 24 hours. Oh, wow. Okay, we're going to put a little bandage on that. It's just like you have a little scratch. This looks like a scratch. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And that's it. Well, that was easy. Okay, you can kind of just mm -hmm. keep on there just for about a, a day or two, mm -hmm. okay? And then just keep ointment on it and keep it uh, covered. We'll always help it heal better, okay? And uh, how soon can I have it uh, off and go out in the sun? Well, if you're going to go out in the sun, we always recommend using your sunblock. Well, I did, I did put it on. Yeah, but I mean, you can go out now. You can go out there the next day. You don't have oh, to okay. You I don't have, have to, I don't have to keep a Band-Aid on it? It's nice to keep a Band-Aid on it. It's a little bit more sensitive to direct sun exposure right now. Okay. okay. So it's better just to kind of keep it covered. All right. Great. All right. That's it. Any other questions? I don't. Do you have any questions for the doctor? Do you have another mole? Because earlier you said there was another mole. I have a little red spot that actually started growing too. Because as we get older, these things happen. But it's it's on it's online. It's right there. Is it just a, can you see that there? This is just what we call hemangiomas. These are very common on the skin. They're just little red blood moles. They're nothing to worry about. Oh, you can good. have them treated good. cosmetically, but it's not anything that is of medical concern. Oh, excellent. Okay. Will it go away on its own? No, typically no. not. Okay, they'll just be there, so you really have to like laser them or burn them to get them to go away completely. Could that turn into cancer? Nope. Good. No, not going to turn into cancer. Excellent. <laughs> Yay!